Hi, I'm a little boy, and I'm from nowhere. I don't know how to talk yet because I'm only 16, but I would like to speak with the highest ranking member of the military, please, because I want him to be my dad. Why, you ask? I don't know. Anyways, I also have a cool story to tell you. It's about a little boy who sucked. He sucked so bad that he died. His name was Casper Hauser. Everyone hated him because he was weird, including his dad. So his dad gave him away to a new dad. And then that dad hated him and he gave him away to another new dad. And that happened again for at least seven more dads. Let me tell you the story of Casper Hauser and his too many dads. <laughs> So, just a quick disclaimer before I start. All of these people are German, so they have weird German names that are hard to pronounce. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to get it right, but I'm sorry if I get it wrong, and let me know in the comments if I mispronounced anything. Okay. One day in 1828 in the town of Nuremberg, Germany, a strange little boy appeared out of nowhere, carrying nothing except for a letter addressed to a cavalry guy named Captain Von Wetpiss. The letter read, Dear Captain, I am a grown-up and I find it a little boy, and then I brought him to a different place, and his dad was a cavalry man, and so he should be a cavalry man, and if you don't make him a cavalry man, he will die and you have to kill him, so make him a cavalry man, please. He did have one other letter with him, and this one said... Hi, I am a mom and this boy's name is Casper Hauser and he is groaning to be tall and his dad died which makes me sad and cried. And the person that writed the other letter is my friend so we write the Sam handwriting because we like each other and are so Klaus friends. Both letters were very clearly written by Casper. People were fascinated by this mysterious little boy who came out of nowhere. Captain Wetpiss didn't make him a cavalry man, and he didn't kill him either. Instead, he adopted him. A shoemaker named John Wick took him over to live with Captain Wetpiss. And Casper didn't really ever say anything. If anybody ever asked him a question, he would say, I don't know. And then he would start crying really hard. He didn't know a lot of words, so he would just be repeating the word horse all the time. He was sort of like a baby, but then he would also repeat the phrase, I want to be a cavalry man as my father was. And that's different than what a baby would say, so people were a bit skeptical. He was about 16 years old, which is also different than what a baby would be. The people began to assume that he might not be a baby, but he did know what money was, which is a thing that Boss Baby knows. Anyways, Casper was really annoying the whole time, so Captain Wetpiss was like, I hate you. I don't know whether you're a baby or not, and that's weird, and you suck, so I'm sending you to prison because of how much you suck. Casper was put in prison because he was not fun to hang out with. He stayed there for two months, and during that time they said that he was in good physical condition but was intellectually impaired. But he did learn how to speak pretty quickly and was able to tell them about his life before he ended up in Nuremberg. He said that he grew up in a tiny room for tiny boys, and he was in complete isolation the whole time. In his room he just had one small bed and four toys, which were two horses, and a dog carved out of wood. I know that that does not equal four toys. Wikipedia said that he had four toys and then they listed three toys. So I don't know. He said that he had never seen another human being before at all. Every morning he would wake up and just find bread and water next to his bed, which must have been from the bread and water fairy. <laughs> 
He's lucky. I wake up every morning with a disappointed woman next to my bed. I must have been visited by the erectile dysfunction fairy. Sometimes the water would taste bitter and it would make him fall asleep. Casper said that he did get visited by one man right before he came to Nuremberg. Casper didn't see what the man looked like, but he said that he came by and taught him how to write his name and stand and walk, and he also taught him how to say the phrase, I want to be a cavalry man as my father was. Casper didn't know what this meant at the time, but now that they've taught him language in prison, he still didn't know what it meant. Unfortunately, teaching him how to speak only made him more annoying. So prison dad was like, get out of here, I hate you so much, and gave him to a new dad. And that new dad was Trevor time. Let's go to Trevor time. Take it away, Trevor. Hi. This time, Katie's right about everything. No notes. Oh, uh, hey wait, we have a sponsor this time. Uh, our friends over at Coal Steel Private Eye wanted us to let you know about their brand new podcast, Coal Steel Private Eye. It's a scripted comedy podcast about a detective duo in a film noir style. There's a whole season out right now with a big cast of characters. Follow them on Instagram at Coal Steel Pod. They do a bunch of giveaways and other fun stuff like that. And you can find them on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. Hi, welcome back. I hope you had a good Trevor time. Casper's next dad was a schoolmaster named Forklift Dad. This guy thought, since Casper is a really stupid dumbass, maybe he could teach him to be less weird and stupid and annoying. That didn't work, so he started doing experiments on him for fun. Which I think is fine, because he was annoying. Do whatever you want to annoying people. You can chase them around and play a game called Throw Rocks at the Weird Boy. Who cares? Just, it's fun. So the professor subjected him to magnetic experiments to find out if he was magnetic, I think. So he would strap him down and just put magnets near him. And, um, yeah, he was magnetic. I am not joking. The professor said that he was magnetic. This is what it says in the Wikipedia article that he was attracted to the north side of a magnet and repelled by the south side. So, I, I don't know, this is just, they don't talk about this at all after that. They just bring this up and then that's it. So we have to be confused about it. There's, I can't, we have to try to not think about it because there's nothing else there. That's what the Wikipedia article said, and then they moved on. So, I don't know. I We have to try not to think about it. We have to know this and just forget it, because it's not even a major part of the story. There's nothing else I can tell you about that. We just have to be confused about it forever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did this to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I burdened you with this knowledge. Try to forget it. So anyways, then this new dad started playing a game called Throw Metal at the Weird Boy. One day in 1829, he was found hiding in the cellar with a wound on his forehead. He said that he got attacked by the man that brought him here and who said to him, you still have to die before you leave the city of Nuremberg. Which doesn't make sense to me. And so people thought that he was making it up and that he did it to himself because he was annoying and did stuff like that uh, pretty often. 
And they found a razor in his room after that, so that probably was the case. So now Forklift Dad was like, oh man, you're the worst. Why are you magnetic? That's weird. Get out of here. And then he transferred him over to another new dad, Joe Biden. Pretty much right after he got adopted by Joe Biden, the maid at his house heard a gunshot from Casper's room. So she ran up and saw him on the ground bleeding from his head. She probably said something like, Oh no! But Casper was actually fine and he explained to her what happened. He said, So basically, I was standing on a chair because I was trying to get a book because I'm small like a baby. And I grabbed a book, but then I realized it wasn't a book, it was actually a gun? So then I accidentally shot it because I thought it was a book, and so I tried to read it, but that, that, I, that I guess made the gun go off. And then the maid probably said something like, What? So after this, Joe Biden came back, and he was like, Why did you do that? That's w weird, and I hate you. So Casper went to a different dad. Baron Von Pestile. The Baron took him in and said, I don't like you. He was given to a new dad, Lord Star Wars, a British nobleman who was very interested in Casper. In a normal way, I think. He actually spent a lot of time and money trying to figure out where Casper was from and who his family was. He took Casper all over Europe to see if he could find any information or if Casper remembered anything about his previous life. A couple times he took him to Hungary because Casper remembered some Hungarian words and he claimed that a Hungarian countess was his mom. When they were there, Casper pointed to a man and he said, yeah, that guy's my dad. I remember him. Yes. So, Lord Star Wars went over to the guy and asked him if he was Casper's dad, and the guy said, Fuck, no, that kid? He's so weird. Yeah, I remember him. He came through here once, and nobody liked him because he was being insane the whole time. Is, did he tell you that I was his dad? Oh my god, he's such a goober. Oh, dude, I gotta tell Jim. Jim! Hey, hey, remember that weird kid? <laughs> Jim, no, I don't mean me. He's razzing me right now. He's, Jim's fine, he's a fun guy. No, I mean, you remember, Casper, Casper the weird kid. Yeah, he's telling people that I'm his dad. That's what I said. I also said that he's a goober. Jim, I think that we're spending so much time together that I'm starting to talk like you. Okay, uh, yeah, okay, goodbye, Jim. I love you. Lord Star Wars spent so much time and money taking Casper around Europe trying to find his dad, but it seemed like Casper was just kind of having fun traveling and every now and then he would just point to a guy and say, yeah, that's my dad. Wait, no, that's not, sorry, I, that's not my dad. Um, maybe can we go to Japan? I just remembered that I'm Japanese. So now Lord Star Wars started to have this weird feeling that Casper might not be Japanese and that he was just lying. He got fed up with it, and he was like, I hate you, go away. And then he was transferred over to a new dad. His name was Gay Michael. So Casper was taken in by Gay Michael, and he began to work as a copywriter during this time. And he had one patron, because he sucked and no one liked him, and he kept getting stuck to the refrigerator, which made him bad at his job. Then that one patron died at some point, but before he died, he wrote a letter that said, 
Casper Hauser is a smart scheming codger, a rogue, a good for nothing that ought to be killed. Which I think is a perfect letter. Anyways, Gay Michael would be Casper's final dad because Casper died on December 14, 1833. He was found with a stab wound in his chest. He said he was lured into a garden by a stranger who was going to give him a bag. The police went to the garden to check it out and they did find a bag and inside of the bag there was a letter. The letter said, Hauser will be able to tell you quite precisely how I look and from where I am. To save Hauser the effort, I want to tell you myself from where I come blank. There's not, it doesn't say, it doesn't say anything in that part. There's another space, we don't know what it says there. The Bavarian border, again, it's, it doesn't, there's not, a blank, there's like a blank space. Okay. On the river, and then a really big blank space here, we do, just, um, I will even tell you the name, M L. Oh, with the two dots. So this letter gives us absolutely no information and Casper obviously wrote a weird letter and then stabbed himself. The note had a bunch of spelling mistakes that were the same ones that Casper always made. And the paper was folded into a triangle, which Casper always did because he was a pervert. And then Casper on his deathbed said something incoherent about writing in pencil. So he probably stabbed himself for attention because people were getting bored with him and they didn't care that he was quirky anymore, but he accidentally went too deep and killed himself. Whoops. After his death, a monument was put up for him. It was to remind the world that lying for attention is good and fun. The plaque on the monument read, Here lies a mysterious one who was killed in a mysterious manner. But it was pretty obvious how he died. He died because he overdosed on stab wounds. <laughs> Casper was an odd boy, which confused people. So they tried to come up with theories about why he was like that. One of the main theories that was going around was that Casper was royal. Because royal people are kooky crazy. Don't believe me? Look at Princess Diana. Why did she get hit by a car? That's a foolish thing to do. This royal theory starts with Napoleon. He had a niece named Stephanie. And her last name is fucked up, so I'm not gonna say it. It was Hitler. She kept having babies, but they were all girls, and girls are useless, and I hate them because they won't have sex with me even though I literally want to. So all girls are bad, and she had tons of them. But then one day she did give birth to a baby boy. Yay! And then he died right away. And that's the story of Stephanie Hitler. But. Hold on, this didn't make any sense, because people back then thought that royal people couldn't die like that. And they could only die by, uh, from lightning or being eaten by God. So the theory was that a different lady, Countess Carolyn von who cares, wanted to get rid of that baby to secure the throne for her own son. So how would she do that? Of course, the only possible solution is to dress up as a ghost and steal someone else's dead baby and swap that baby out for the royal baby. So she went in and did that and she said, Ooh, your baby died. I'm sorry for your loss. Ooh. And then she left with the real baby. So Stephanie was like, Oh fuck, this is terrible. My baby died, and now there's a ghost. Ay, ay, ay. But luckily, none of this happened. Royal people can die, and that is what happened. This was all just a way for people to try to make sense of why Casper was such a freak. 
And they argued about it for decades until like 40 years later, some guy wrote a book about it that basically said, you are all stupid and wrong. Then like a hundred years later in 1998, I guess people still thought that he was a royal. So some scientist guy dug up his body. Yeah, it's another one of those stories. And he got his hands on Casper's underwear. It wasn't for any weird reason. It was just because there was blood on his underwear. So he tested the DNA and guess what? It wasn't royal blood. Except it also wasn't Casper's DNA. It was someone else's. So I don't know. I don't know. It's like, again, like the magnetic thing. Um, it's just, we just have to not know anything else about this. And I'm sorry. So since that was really weird, a few years later, in 2002, some more scientists got their hands on some of Casper's hair, and they tested that DNA. And it was inconclusive. So now they had to track down Stephanie's descendants and ask if they could dig up her dead baby's body and test that DNA. And they were like, no. Let's not do that. This doesn't matter. And also, who cares? And the scientists were like, what? Why not? Come on, you're being a bitch. Why can't we dig up a dead baby? Fuck you. Honestly, it was a little bit suspicious. So Casper, he might have been royal. We don't know. Nothing in this kid's life made sense. He had way too many dads, way more dads than most people have. He could have been royal. Maybe everything he said was true. I don't know. I don't know anything. The only thing that we can know for sure is that he was magnetic. 